Hello, my soccer universe. Italia is in the final. I'm so happy. However, I have to say, uh, this was not about Italy winning that final, but I had the feeling it was more about Spain. Uh, I don't want to say do everything to not win it, but uh, Spain had that under control for most of the time, uh, especially in the first half. Um, and my headline for that video, right up until the equalizer for Spain was, uh, you have to score to win. Because it really, I mean, there were numerous chances uh, for Spain to win, to score already early on. And they had Italy on the back foot. I actually really, really think that in many ways, um, uh, Luis Enrique looked at what Austria did against Italy and said, yeah, if we press this Italy side uh, and attack them early, despite them having those great midfielders, they're not very comfortable with that much pressure. And that's how you get to them. And I have to say, if they would have had a striker, uh, like of the David Villa type, I think Spain would have won that one. And we would be talking now about uh, Spain being in the final and making a comeback after... Uh, you know, nine years not being in a final at all. So um, it turns on so many minor things. However, I also want to say it was over a really good game. As I said, I thought that Spain uh, won it. Uh, you know, at least if, if, if it was a boxing match, I think Spain would have won that one. In regulation but then uh, you also gotta give credit that Italy uh, held tight uh, on the back their defense is still outstanding uh, and they were always dangerous on the counter-attack and you could see that uh, after um, initially a few exchanges I think Italy had uh, I think uh, the first five minutes may belong to Italy and then and we already fully in the uh, <laughs> review of the game. First few minutes belonged to Italy and then um, it was becoming clear that Spain, especially with uh, Pedri, Busquets and Koke, are controlling the midfield. They are winning the midfield battle, they are keeping the ball and they are keeping it away. Also, uh, Olmo was not accounted for and that, that was maybe the first technically I don't want to say masterstroke because I know in a way it backfired, but um, there was no Morata, there was no Moreno. Uh, Luis Enrique played Oyar Sabal, uh, who, you know, is, is kind of this quicker player and I actually like him a lot. However, he did have an awful, awful game uh, when it comes to finishing. And then Dani Olmo, to me, uh, together with Petri, was more or less man of the match. I mean, he was always there always there you could always reach him whenever he touched the touch ball the, 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 there was danger Pedri this guy's 18 years old he did not play a wrong pass the entire time so uh having again I'm overjoyed that Italy won this one I'm overjoyed however to be honest uh when I watched that game and it was to me, I was more like afraid, oh, this is really not going Italy's way, this is really not, not going. So I, I had always this anxiety around me, not nervous anxiety, but anxiety uh, in a way. So maybe I didn't enjoy the game as much as I probably should have. Um, but yeah, I had this kind of feeling that this is, this is not going Italy's way. And then, you know, this freaking statistic with... Um, all teams in white have so far won and moved uh, moved on, which I know sample size is low, but you know, I hate these things. Uh, the only time I'm really superstitious is when I watch soccer games. So, hmm. there you go. Yeah, well, uh, Jersey matchup. I, I think for me, always, uh, Italy against Spain is always a crapshoot. I think both teams could play in their first choice kit and no one have, will have a problem with that. How UEFA mandates this and all blue against all white is beyond me. So, going back to, 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 to the game. I think uh, when I said uh, Oyar Sabal had, had a really bad game, I mean, you saw it already. I think it was around the 10th minute or so. When Pedri played a wonderful pass into Oyar Sabal, who makes the right run but cannot control the ball. He's free in front of uh, Dollaruma. He just needs to control it and pull it in. 
Uh, it doesn't. So, I mean, yeah, that was a big let off. And I think at that point, you really felt that Spain are uh, going for it. We also about then had another where he tried a shot that just went high. Uh, so, yeah, the only thing for really for, it, for, for Italy came, I want to say a little bit, you know, also in the early ex exchanges when... Um, Emerson came out, uh, uh, was running around, Une Simon comes for no apparent reason out, and Emerson just gets a ball before Simon, plays it to Immobile, and if Immobile immediately hands it to Barella, Barella can roll it in, into the empty net. However, Immobile tries to make the goal himself, and again, I think uh, I see his work rate. But almost uh, Immobile is a little bit like we said about Harry, well, what we said about Harry Kane in the early stage days of, of, of two minutes. Almost a little bit playing with ten men. Yes, he makes important runs, but I think from a striker, I, I also felt that he was too slow most of of, of time. I, I did not like necessarily what Immobile was doing. However, he proved an instrumental later on. But that I think then for a long time was anything that Italy could muster, and the first real chance again. Pedri, big Spanish, pre the, the, uh, the pressing of Spain. I mean, Italy just, just, just cleared um, in the opponent's half. Busquets can control the ball, plays it to Pedri, who plays it wonderfully outside to Oyar Sabal, who is probably his best uh, move of the game. Plays it over to Olmo, who has his shot first blocked, but he gets the re rebound. And that will have gone in, but that was a great save by Dollaruma. So... There you go. And I think it was all Spain and all Italy really needed, um, yeah, I think, until the 35th to get a little bit control of the game again. You saw already Berardi uh, warming up and then um, they were thinking that Chiesa, who had not seen the field in many ways, they decided eventually to leave, leave the way and actually Italy arguably had what well, came the closest to scoring when again uh, Insigne passed and I think that it, there was an offside ability we would not have stood but the um, ball comes to Insigne and Emerson an overlapping run takes then a shot and it hits right the corner of uh, the goal uh, so that could have done something however uh, Italy needed to do something to gain a little bit more con 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 control of the midfield because you could not uh, get any, 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 anything there and I had the feeling that Italy really had to resign themselves to kind of uh, we need to uh, counter because this Spanish team is killing us in midfield uh, and so yeah Mancini then uh, made it more a 4-1-4-1 and yeah the early exchanges again um, it was not as dominant from Spain anymore because Italy now could hold their own and I think the second half was a whole lot more even uh, there was a, a thing in the, around the 53rd uh, Chiesa chance where I think yeah if he doesn't put it so science center this could have been a goal but he makes up for it uh, again Spain have come to, um, I think it was Giorgio de Alba with a cross in numerous crosses in and it was always Dollaruma uh, picking it and then he plays it out really really fast I think it's one van to Verratti who then plays it to Insigne who makes a run and plays on a pass really nicely forward and this is this transition game of Italy is what makes them so dangerous and that was always kind of the um, despite Spain having all the uh, control uh, of the midfield uh, being caught in and transition was always going to be dangerous for for them and that's exactly how it proved Insigne wants to play to Immobile who cannot get get the ball it's blocked off and uh, Chiesa gets the ball, solos through and into the net. So, 1-0 Italy, and I remember saying to my wife, Yay! Boy, this is undeserved. <laughs> I really did not think that Italy deserved to take the lead, but I was overjoyed, of course. Um, and then I think Italy, I mean, the next 10 minutes were probably the nervous one because you really thought, uh, thought that Spain is not throwing everything at them. Uh, for instance, Morata, Morata came out for Ferran Torres and that gave suddenly the Spanish attack a focal point. Um, however, I think it was again a Jordi Alba cross to a point blank open Oyar Sabal who cannot get his head to the head. I mean, that is... If he connects there, that's the 1-1 one, one right there, and I think Spain will even win it. Uh, but yeah, he had to then be replaced by Gerard Moreno, and suddenly we have two strikers out there for Spain. Uh, rather unusual, 
And it was right around the time when Moreno came on. I thought, that, oh yeah, yeah, but then I think for the next 10 minutes, Italy could keep the game really, really quiet. And actually pushed a little bit forward and that actually undid them then because Morata suddenly found themselves free. I don't know where the midfield was. And then two against six, Morata and Olmo run straight through the Italian defense. Uh, Morata plays the ball to Olmo, makes a darting run through the Italian defense, gets the ball, and then I don't know what Dollaruma is doing. Uh, he's standing in the middle of the goal and he decides too early instead of being tall in front of Morata. Goes to the left, speculating that he will pull it wide, and then uh, Morata has an open, gaping goal ahead, ahead of him, just needs to pull, pull it in. And Morata. Going up to Hero, absolutely. He was the hero at at, at, at that moment. That uh, Dollar Rumor mistake also for me uh, kind of exemplified both goalkeepers, young goalkeepers, were very much on the edge. Um, I think Simon frequently tried to come out uh, too quickly and um, was always a danger there. Dollar Rumor very often had too much cool about him by keeping the ball and then being pressed and almost losing it or having to play it out. So, I mean, they both had their uh, moment where you think, no, world-class goalkeepers don't do that. And yeah, both might develop into true world-class goalkeepers. I would argue Dollaruma already is in many ways. But yeah, with this 1-1, uh, I think there was then Spain tried to go a little bit more, but um, it was not really anything happening. I think Berardi uh, had, had, had a good shot that, again, uh, if he plays it further, I think there was a better chance because the angle was rather tight and, uh, you know, Berardi come, come on, I think gave Italy also a little bit more focus, but I actually would like to see him start potentially even over Immobile. Uh, so yeah, kind of changed things a little bit around and uh, game was more even again still with a little bit advantage um, for uh, Spain in overtime uh, yeah the, a little bit less happening I think especially for the first 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes the team still went for it um, and there were two really big scenes where the, the one I think Di, Di Lorenzo shoves the Spanish attacker should have probably been a bit of a penalty. I don't blame this on Brüch, who has been a really excellent referee. And he just did the previous game, England-Ukraine, which I found curious. Um, yeah, that was uh, probably a penalty, but this is what VAR, where VAR has to step in. So uh, it's not necessarily on Brüch. But then also a free kick from outside where Olmo uh, plays it very flat and Dollaruma has all kinds of troubles. Saving that one, and then Morata makes a little bit of mess of it, is blocked and then goes out. Um, on the other side, uh, Berardi was a clear offside, scores a goal, which would have been a great winner. But in the end, you had the feeling this is ending up with penalties. Yeah. What then Chiellini and Jordi Alba were doing, especially with Chiellini uh, hugging and <laughs> you know, I mean the it, uh, the body language I think from both teams was actually quite positive, and I really have to say what I actually liked uh, most is that you could, could see that both teams have actually quite some respect for each other, and despite the occasion being so hard, I mean you saw Chiesa chatting ahead of uh, overtime. I think it was. Uh, or in, in the overtime to time break with Louis, Luis Enrique having quite an animated, nice chat. Uh, even then, uh, ahead of the game, I mean, the Italians, you feel that there's a lot of positive energy. They play with house money. They're, they have reached their goals since the semi semifinal. So uh, that was good. But also the Spanish. I had a real feeling that, uh, yes, we are fighting hard, but we really don't dislike each other. And I think that was uh, very positive to see. Italy has to play in front of their own fans, which is never a good thing. Uh, if you have like the wall of your own fans, because that adds the pressure, however, Italy won the coin toss, so they could go first. And uh, Locatelli steps up and it's saved by Simon. And yeah, with the jumping back and forth. And then I really thought at that, at that moment, what do I want? Uh, do I want Italy in the final? I mean, Spain was the better team um, and Anyway, I have kind of said uh, resigned to the fact, and not in a bad way resigned to, to the fact, it's just that I think I support two teams more 
than I do England, but I've resigned to the fact that England will win this tournament. Um, and again, this is, this is no ill will, it's just I like Italy and Denmark a little bit more in this tournament. Uh, so yeah, I thought maybe, yeah, maybe a semi-final exit on penalties in a game where you probably should not have made it to the penalties, I find it more honorable and less gut-wrenching than if you would lose a final to England in a way because you're so close and then you end this turn to them with a really on a sour note. But on the other side, I want Italy to win it all, so you know, may, 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 may make it to the final. So uh, those were my thoughts when almost stepped up and then almost shoots over the bar. Uh, who is actually a machine? Belotti is not deterred at all by what Simon is doing. I, th I think he shut up uh, Simon quite some. Uh, Gerard Moreno, wonderful penalty. Bonucci, I think that was the last one where Simon tried to do a little bit and antics, especially then going all the way to Bonucci's right before jumping right back in and Bonucci shoots exactly in that corner in a way and uh, very expertly. Thiago's was almost saved by Dollaruma. Uh, but uh, he shot it very, very well, Bernadeschi, no problem. And then Morata come, comes up, the hero of the game. I think Morata changed the game for Spain in the sense that they finally had a focal point. They still couldn't score many goals. However, he orchestrated the first, for the first goal and he definitely... Um, I think when Morata came on, I felt that Spain was a whole lot more dan dangerous. However, I, he's not the guy who looks most confident. And you could see that because the way he stepped up, yeah, yeah, and then he shoots it. He probably had decided on the corner wide to roll it in, and it's an easy save for Dollaruma. And then Jorginho gets, uh, come, come, comes up, and you could see Simon, he wanted to save that one. This was his big chance. He commits early. Before Jorginho's hoppity hop, he commits, and Jorginho can roll it in. And Italy is in the final in Wembley. Uh, as I said, I'm super happy about that one. Uh, however, I can feel with Spain, uh, Spanish fans, because uh, that was the best Spanish performance. It was over a great game now that I talk about it, but yeah, it was not. I uh, didn't see it at that point. Uh, so yeah, we have, as I said, Italy in the final. Uh, they're still outsiders in the projected bracket because England goes in and uh, in home field advantage should carry England. Although, you know, you never know. However, overall, Italy are now 49% because they are already in the final. Whereas England and Denmark, one of them still has to make it. So that's why uh, England is uh, second there. But you see where this is going. So we have today the semi-final um, between England and Denmark. I hear the hype in England is enormous. Um, and Denmark is playing with house money, but then uh, Kasper Schmeichel kind of gave some bulletin board material. I have a feeling this might uh, only last for 90 minutes, but let's see where it will go. Denmark has recently beaten England at Wembley, but that was right after the cold cold break. I think we have two very different teams. However, I can see Denmark doing something. However, I would actually think that England will win this one rather. I would say 2-0 two, two England. It's, I guess, what I see. And then we would have an Italy-England final. What a classic. Never been in a final before. So, yeah. Let's see. In any case, I would like to hear your opinion on that game uh, that we saw yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I have not had not much sleep because of it, but in any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my Sofa universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!